Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with the AP Calculus 2012 free response questions, and we're on number four here. The function f is defined by this. Find f prime of x. Okay. So I write when I do these, I always whenever I see radicals, I always want to write them as exponents, so I can apply all the proper rules. So square root is like this one half. So f prime of x, I always kind of out sign in, outside I do power rule, okay, but since the inside is not x, I got to take the derivative of the inside, that's equal to, the, these twos cancel, but I still have a negative sign, so it's negative x, 25 minus x squared to the one half, or negative one half which is equal to negative x over square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay, so that's a. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph at x equals negative three. Okay, to draw a tangent line to a graph, I need to use slope point form. So it's y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. Now the point is at negative three, so let's find the point first. Well, at x equals negative, so x naught equals negative 3. y naught would just be simply the function at x naught, which is f of negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 25 minus 9 is 16. Squared is 16 is 4. So then this equation transforms into y minus 4 equals m. x minus negative 3 makes it plus 3. Okay? Now I need the slope. The slope is given by f derivative at x equals negative 3, so i got to do it here. That becomes negative negative 3 divided by the square root of 16, which we said was 4, so that's positive 3 over 4. So we plug that into m, so now this equation becomes 1, and bring the 4 to the other side, 3 fourths x plus 3 plus 4. And I'll just leave it like that. You could put it into mx plus b form if you want to distribute the 3 fourths. You don't have to. Okay. Um, C. Let g be the continuous. Fun let g be the function defined uh, by this. Is g continuous at x equals negative three? Use the definition of continuity to explain your answer. Well, definition of continuity means that the limit as x approaches negative three of g. I want. Oh, this is what I want to show. The limit as x approaches negative three of g of x is equal to g of negative three. So let's do a few things. First, what's g of negative 3? g of negative 3, I use this condition. It becomes, is equal to f of negative 3. And that's equal, what we said was 4, right? Because we did that before. Okay. Now the limit, as x approaches negative 3, I got to look at the left and the right. Negative 3 from the left of g of x coming from the left I'm looking at only f of x the whole time so it's the same as x approaching negative 3 from the left of f of x when x so from the left um, I can just plug that in and that definitely equals 4 plug in negative 3 there and then when I do this limit from the right side sorry it's negative 3 from the right of g of x I use I look at this x plus 7 That's equal to 4. So because from the left and the right, the limits are the same, that means the limit of x approaches negative 3 of g of x is equal to 4, which is equal to uh, g of negative 3. So yes, it's continuous there because these two are equal. OK, and the last part, which I'm a little out of space on, um, which I'll just do in the next, I'll just make another page here. We'll just do on D is find the value integral 0 to 5 x square root of 25 minus x squared dx. Okay, so we've got to compute this integral. Well, I know like if I did u of here, I would get du out here. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. u equals 25 minus x squared. du is equal to minus 2x dx. 
So that means negative 1 half du is equal to x dx. And I do that because I have an x dx here. And so this would be the square root of u du. And then last is I want to transform the bounds because I prefer transforming the bounds rather than going back into x because I just it just then I don't have to go back and substitute. u of 0 is 25 and u of 5 is equal to 0. So then this becomes the integral from 25 to 0 because the u the 0 got converted into 25 and the 5 got converted into uh, sorry the 0 got converted to 25 and the 5 got converted to 0. I have a negative one half du. That's the x dx times the square root of u. Can bring the negative one half integral 25 to zero. Uh, u to the one half du. Then I can up, now I know I can do power rule negative one half u add one. It's three halves divided by that three halves. Evaluated from u equals 25 to zero. So that's negative one half times two-thirds so that cancels with that and then u to the three halves so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in zero zero to the three halves minus 25 to the three halves right and so this is negative one-third times zero minus 25 square root of 25 is 5 5 cubed is 125 so then this is negative one third times negative one third. The negatives cancel, so it's one twenty-five over three. All right, so that was a little more computationally um, more than most free response questions, but that's not bad. All right, let's take a look. All right, uh, negative x over 25 minus x squared. That's what we got. That's correct. 3 fourths 4. So y equals 4 plus 3 fourths x plus 3. Y equals 3 fourths x plus 3 plus 4. Yep. The limit. So yes is continuous because we did the limit from the left, from the right. Therefore, the limit g of 3, negative 3 equals f of negative 3, which is 4. So that's correct. And 125 over 3. So awesome. Uh, hope you guys found that helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video when we uh, finish on this AP Calculus exam. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.